guys, it's Danielle and I'm in the kitchen making a Codswald cheese today. This is more of like a cheddar-esque, cheddar-ish, stirred curd cheddar cheese, but um, I am going to use my Clabber culture that I have been culturing on the counter. I'll actually show it to you. This is culture. I actually got this one, um, started it last night. So when you bring a raw warm milk in the house, use a couple of tablespoons, I do two tablespoons for a pint of warm raw milk of your older clabber, so the night before, the day before, into your new warm milk. Give it a good shake and let it coagulate. You can use that as a starter, supposedly. So I'm gonna try it. Um, I've been feeding it like, like you would, like a sourdough starter. I've been feeding this. I've been feeding and making a new clabber every day for probably a little more than a week. Um, saving back my older clabber into the fridge, I can use that as like a cultured buttermilk and replace a replacement for buttermilk biscuits and all that stuff. So I'm not telling you about that right now, but this is my first time going to culture any cheeses with my clabber. So come along. We're actually going to get this started. In our cheese pot, we're going to go ahead and put five gallons of milk. We are going to heat this five gallons of milk up to 90 degrees. The direction with the clabber is to use a quarter cup per gallon of milk. So I have, like I said, a um, five gallon, so I'm gonna need a, a cup and a quarter, one and a quarter cup of this clabber. And then the rest that's left, because I've already fed my other clabber, is gonna go in my clabber jar, my discard jar, and that is in the fridge. It's up to 90, turn the heat off. I'm going to add the culture, which is our clabber culture. This is a cup and a half of clabber culture that I shook to kind of make it creamy. So we have snack time right now. So I'm going to, oh, this feels so wrong. I'm going to uh, mix it in. And then we are going to let this ripen or culture ripen for 45 minutes. Hmm. Actually, I might need to go get my notes. There it is. Hold on one second. I'm going to continue to stir it just a few minutes first. Oh, I hope this works. Let's see, what did I write down? So it's going to culture for 45 minutes. We're going to let this ripen for 45 minutes. And I'm going to put the lid on this as it is ripening to try to keep that temperature at 90 degrees. Timer just went off. It has been 45 minutes and we are now going to add, I'm back and forth about this, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to add calcium chloride this time. My cow's milk has not been setting up as well with our rennet. Part of that is this rennet is almost expired. <laughs> Next month it expires and I still have um, half, almost half of a bottle. So I don't really want to throw this out. So I'm trying to use it up even though I don't feel like it's doing quite as well as it was. Um, so adding this has helped me to get an, a higher yield from the same amount of milk. So this is optional when you have raw milk, you do not have to put in calcium chloride. But like I said, I have been just because it's, it doesn't hurt anything. It's not a bad thing. And it's, uh, it seems to be helping. So that's what I'm doing. I gotta grab it. When you are adding uh, calcium chloride, if you want to, in your cheese, you do about a quarter teaspoon per gallon. So I have five gallons. I'm still only gonna use one teaspoon. I'm gonna kinda dilute it and I'm going to pour it over the surface. Okay, so we're going to pour this calcium chloride over the surface of the water. It's mixed with a quarter cup of water. And this is not water, this is milk. <laughs> we're pouring the calcium chloride that's dissolved within some a quarter cup of water onto the top of the milk. 
that is usually you add that right before you put in the rennet. So this has our culture, has our calcium chloride. I'm going to now put my rennet in. So I am using this kind of rennet. Like I said, it's, it's almost expired. And usually you do uh, a little less for your milk than you would if you're using raw milk than you would store-bought. But for me, I'm going to do for this five gallons, I'm gonna do one teaspoon of rennet into a quarter cup. Just give it a stir. You do not want this to be chlorinated water. Uh, if you have like tap water, you can use your Berkey to, to uh, filter that out. Pour it on the surface and mix that down in. So the amount of rennet, you can start with what I've suggested, but that's really, um, there is a difference between your milk and the different times of lactation. Sometimes it seems to take a lot more to coagulate my milk. Sometimes it seems to take less. Um, I think that has to do with the amount of time that she has been in milk, uh, things like that. So, calcium chloride is just added, adding more calcium to your, my, I, I think my kids are yelling. So if you hear that, you're not supposed to take more than 30 minutes to mix this. And then we are going to allow this to ripen now for 40 minutes, not ripen. We're gonna allow this to coagulate for 40 minutes. We'll come back and check. Okay, it was actually 45 minutes, not 40. And I'm going to check for a clean break. I saw someone do this on the internet. I'm constantly watching other people make cheese videos. No, make cheese in videos. So they went like this. They cut it and then they went and lifted it. Yep, looks good. It is a clean break. So for this type of cheese, this Cotswold, we're going to actually use a whisk to um, cut our curds. So I got this in the mail the other day. <laughs> It's a very big whisk, but now I won't get my hands down in it. It's uh, big enough to go through my whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the curds. Okay, that looked great. So now we're going to let these heal for five minutes before we start the stirring process. Smells like heaven. Smells like butter. And while it's healing, I'm just going to put this lid back on because we want it to keep this 90 degree temperature as long as possible. Okay, we are going to start the next step. These have healed now for five minutes and we're going to start stirring. This Caldsworth, uh, you stir for 20 minutes without turning the heat on. And then we're going to turn the heat on and stir for 35 minutes. I'm checking my notes. 35 minutes, gradually bringing the temperature up to 104 over the 35 minutes. So I'm gonna start with just stirring and we're gonna do it pretty gently at first. And then we will um, add the heat on after 20 minutes. So I'll bring you back when we turn this heat on. And I will try to write the, the recipe and the steps that I take in the description box below, but you can always reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram is actually where I'm most active. Uh, and it's just Dry Hollow Homestead on Instagram and you will see me. And if you have questions and you want like more, um, you know, quicker response, <laughs> that's where you're probably gonna get it. If you wanna talk to me there, I would love to have you. But you can also um, ask questions in the comments below. I, I do read everything. I don't always get to it as quickly as something like Instagram. But definitely give me your thoughts and ideas on things, what you've seen in your cheeses. Um, this is such a fun experience to make your own cheese. And it's kind of addictive. I definitely feel like it's an addiction. This is probably, I was trying to do the math, I think, so this is her third lactation here on this farm. So she's, we've definitely had her for at least three years. And I started making cheeses about hard wheels of cheese just a couple months into owning a cow because she gave me so much milk. 
it was six gallons of milk a day and I just I didn't know what to do with that um, it was a good problem to have and I was ecstatic and I was really hoping that uh, we would have an overabundance but yeah I've been making cheese now for about three years so I feel like I have a lot of experience and some of it you just kind of get you get a feel for but if I can help you in any way feel more confident doing this in your kitchen just let me know I try to explain but sometimes I feel like I talk another language I have a lot I have very strong ADD tendencies and that can come out very confusing to most people <laughs> so bring you back after 20 minutes of stirring with no heat on the 20 minutes without the heat on is up we now have to stir for 35 minutes I'm checking again yes 35 minutes for um, and bring the temperature up to 104 very slowly so you if you heat it up too fast you can turn it off let it kind of mellow for a little bit as you're stirring but you want to take a gradually over the whole 35 minutes to get up to 104 degrees and I checked this we were just under 90 degrees from when we um, had turned the heat off to begin with and I have a little buddy that is done taking his nap and he does not want me to go far so I'm going to have to be holding him so I might not use my hand anymore but they are definitely clumping together quite a bit I'm wondering if I should have uh, let them uh, coagulate a little bit longer I feel like they did not hold their structure with the whisking as much as I would like them to but too late now so we'll just see we'll see what happens it does have a wonderful sweet smell to it um, I'm so far so good with this clabber culture I'm very happy with it so we will heat this up to 104 and I will see you back here when I'm done after this cooking is done, we're going to let them set, the curds set in the bottom of the pot for five minutes, and then we will drain off most of the whey, as much whey as we can without getting to the curds, and then we will add the salt. Uh, we're going to do one tablespoon of salt per gallon of milk, so I have five in this, so five tablespoons of, of salt, and then we're going to do onion, dried onion flakes, and dried chives. We're going to do one teaspoon for each gallon of each of those so it'll be five and five and then we are also going to need a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic powder per gallon so i'll do a teaspoon and a quarter of garlic powder in there and i'll show you this but i just might not be able to talk because i'm not really sure why my little one is so fussy but he is definitely not happy with me right now huh so and then once we're at that point um, that's really uh, how you make a stirred curd cheddar and it's a, a much easier uh, cheddar to make than the traditional way where you stack the curds and cheddar them but they're it's good it's a really good it's a really good cheese too so this is kind of a shortcut way but adding the spices and trying the clabber culture I think this will make a wonderful cheese I'm excited to eat it I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat off. I feel like we are just perfect here. I don't want to go a whole lot more. It's still pretty bouncy and not too rubbery and I don't want to go any longer. I feel like that's good. So five minutes and then we will drain off as much weight as we can and we'll stir our seasonings in with it. These have settled quickly for five minutes, so I'm going to try to pour off most of the way. Yeah, now I have the baby on my back. So. You want to kind of do it gently, but that's not easy to do. Especially when you're doing it alone. Now. Okay, so I don't want any of my curds to go. I'm going to need to get them. Okay, cool. Oh. Yeah. And don't let any of the curds go in. Just catch them. Just a little bit. Oh. Let me switch. 
places. Much of its way out as I can. So now we are at the point where we want to kind of break this up and we will add our seasonings to it. Um, let's start with the salt. One tablespoon per gallon. We have five gallons. So. And then we're going to do the dehydrated onions. I'm hoping that these will work. They're pretty thick chopped onions, but I'm doing it. And it's a teaspoon of these onions per gallon. So one, two, three, four, five of those. <clears throat> and then chives, the same ratio, one teaspoon. And then our granulated garlic is such a small, you know, um, it's powdered up so small and it packs such a punch. It is only a quarter of a teaspoon per gallon. So I'm going to do one teaspoon and a quarter, one and a quarter teaspoon. Now, just like when we're doing a stirred curd, we're actually going to break this up and mix all of this together. Wow, I feel very short. Let's see. A lot more whey has passed through. It's kind of seeping out because of the salt being added. Break up the pieces into walnut shaped curds, sized curds, walnut sized curds. Okay, I broke up all my cheese into smaller curds, mixed it in good, stirred it really well. And then I ran some boiling water through my cheese press with the mold. I have a Tomei mold. I'll link everything I can in the description box in case you want to make this too. And then I have a, I'm getting it dirty now, but I have a word. I feel rushed because my camera's about to die. <laughs> I lined it with a cheesecloth that is actually um, flour sack kitchen towels and I'm going to load up all of my curds into my press and we'll get it pressing for on a medium pressure. So there it is in the press. I have it on medium pressure. Cheddar is notorious for being a very hard cheese to press because you've already added the salt into it. It's already cooled down quite a bit by the time you're trying to press it. Uh, so we start with a, a medium pressure and then we will definitely come back, flip, and put firm more pressure each time, uh, several times for this cheese. So first, medium pressure. I've got lots of whey coming out for about 40, 45 minutes. We'll come back and flip. It has been about 45 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and flip this cheese, take a look at it, see how it's knitting together. I have a wonderful apprentice, Josiah, who is my filming guy. And how old are you, Josiah? I'm not Josiah. Uh, Nehemiah, sorry. Eight. I have too many kids. No. So Nehemiah is eight. All right. It is looking pretty good. Oh my goodness. A little bit of crumbs still. So I'm not going to redress this. If I had any sticking, if my cheese was sticking to this too much, then I would try. But let me give you a little bit of a closer look. You can see how it's knit together on this lower half a lot better than the top half. We are going to go ahead and flip it like this and add more pressure when we press for a little bit longer. I've also got one kiddo on my back. <laughs> Yo. They're just everywhere. <laughs> I don't Dad, know how people keep their, their claws really like link free. 
but uh, it's okay. Uh, uh, uh. I'm going to go ahead and put, put this on firm pressure. That is how tight I am making my springs in order to say I'm on a firm pressure. So I'm going to let that, there's some whey starting to drip out. Sorry, there. So I'm going to put a timer on for another 45 minutes. This has been another 35, 40 minutes. I'm taking it out of the press. We're going to flip it and press it again, but it's always good to check and be a drip, just uh, looking at the press and see if you have it uneven a little bit like I do, but it's knitting together really well. This is great. You want it to knit together good because you don't want any space for any bacteria to grow. Anything, um, the, the more tight knit it is, the easier it is to keep it from growing anything bad. So I'm going to flip it and we're going to press it again on firm pressure for about two to four hours. So I'll just flip it one more time before we go to bed. So it has been probably about three, four more hours since we turned it last. I'm going to do my last turning for the night. We will leave this overnight on firm pressure, but we need to check it, see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks great. It's knit together really well. That's good. Now you sometimes um, you can change this if you feel like it needs it. It did not stick, and I'm not seeing any reason why I should change my cheesecloth. Now I can't remember what side was down. <laughs> Pretty sure it was like this. But it looks good. You want to smell it? Zachary? Ooh. That smells sweet. It should be. It should smell sweet because I feel like that's the way I got it. Back. Sweeter than most. Nope. Um, it should smell sweet because I used clabber to culture this. I'm excited about it. I've never made made this exact type, but it's a cheddar. So I'm gonna press it on firm overnight. After it is pressed overnight, get it out of the press, and we are going to air dry it for between one to three days. You want it to be a little bit dry on the outside before you vacuum seal, if that's how you choose to age. I vacuum sealed this Codsworth, and then I'm actually aging this in my cellar inside a, a ripening container down there, just to see if that does well. And you can age that for one month. I'm here editing this video and I never did an outro, so I'm going to do it right now. Thank you guys so much for coming along. I hope that you have good cheese making in your kitchen and stay tuned. We will definitely taste test the Codsworth when it is done. We will find out if clabber culture is working well, which I have a sneaking suspicion that it is because I have used clabber culture now several more times. So I have good, um, a good anticipation that it's going to be good. So we will talk to you later. God bless and we speak Jesus over you. Bye.